Today on Chuck's Garage, we install Holly's new Terminator EFI system and take it on a test drive. Hi, I'm Chuck Hansen. Welcome to Chuck's Garage. You know, this old Silver 70 has been a great platform for testing a lot of products over the years, and today we got another project planned. We're going to take this Holly 3310 and upgrade it with Holly's brand new Terminator EFI setup. But before we start turning wrenches, let me show you what's all included in that kit. You know, there are a lot of reasons for upgrading to fuel injection. For instance, some of the fuel blends out there right now, especially in the summertime, can lead to fuel percolation in the bowls of the carburetor and fuel vapor lock even. With fuel injection, well, you're not going to have to deal with any of that. Plus, you're going to get the potential for improved drivability and the potential for increased fuel mileage. Now, quite honestly, a lot of guys don't convert over to fuel injection because it's not easy to do. For instance, after you get all the hardware bolted up, you still have to take the car down the road, have a buddy over in the seat over there with a laptop, and he's remapping your fuel and your timing curves, and well, that's a pain. So you could also hire somebody to do your tuning for you, but that's additional expense. So Holly's taken all of those concerns and just got rid of them with this new Terminator EFI system, and this is what makes it real easy. This is the Terminator EFI ECU and what it does it takes all the input from the sensors combines it all and tells the fuel injection setup exactly what it needs for the driving conditions and what your engine is telling it that it needs. Now Holly's made it real simple to install this for instance this wiring harness all the terminals are already on there, simple plug and play deal, almost too simple. Uh, of course you're also going to have O2 sensor, temp sensors, throttle brackets here. Check out this cool little handheld deal. Now what this is going to do, it's going to prompt you with a couple of simple questions. All you got to do is answer them. It'll get you in the basic startup mode and from there you just drive the car and that computer is going to learn everything that it needs to know to tell the fuel injection what it needs. But hey, check this out. This is the coolest part of that whole hardware package here. This is the throttle body. Now besides that cool gray color here, I'm going to share something with you. This throttle body is based on the same one that's being used in NASCAR today. And as you can see from this gasket right here, this thing will bolt up to any square flange holly out there. Um, fuel system. They got four separate fuel delivery systems here. We're going to start with the most simple, inexpensive setup. We'll talk about them later, but I say right now it's time to get that old carburetor off there. Start getting this new stuff on. Well, all right, we're going to get rid of this hood here to make it a little easier to work on and to give you guys a little bit better look. Now I've got my buddy Eric here, he's going to help me out today here. We're going to get this job done pronto. So let's get started on this carb. The first thing that we want to do is disconnect the positive battery cable. Then we can remove the throttle cable and spring, the vacuum lines, the fuel line, and the carb retaining nuts. Now we can just get that old carburetor out of the way. Now Holly touts this as being a complete kit so you don't have to make any last minute runs to the parts house on a Saturday afternoon somewhere. So they, can, they include the studs in their kit and also the gasket. We're just going to replace all of that. All right, now we're ready for the throttle body, but before I bolt it up, there are a couple of things that I want to show you here. First of all, if you check this out, all of the actuators and sensors are all OE quality, which means that if you have some problems out in the field this kind of weekend, all you got to do is go down to your local parts store, you can source them there, and probably get them pretty inexpensively too. The second thing is all the wiring. It's already pre-terminaled, it's routed, and check it out, it comes into one pigtail. Plug and play, baby, that's what we're talking about. Really, really simple. Now, on the bottom side here, a couple of things I want to point out here. First of all, Holly has moved the injectors down here below the throttle plates, and check out these aluminum rings here. These are actually annular fuel discharge rings there that's going to result in really good fuel atomization. Now, I also know that I told you earlier that you, know, you can bolt this thing up to any intake that has a square Holly flange. That doesn't mean that you guys with spread bore intakes are totally left out in the dark, but you know what you can do is you can go down to any speed shop and you can pick up that one inch adapter that necks it down from a square flange to a spread bore. No problem there. But I'll tell you what, if you've got an intake that has the dual um, uh, bolt pattern already drilled into it, 
what I want you to do is you just set this thing on there and you check right along this edge, right in here. Sometimes there's a little void right there that can cause a vacuum leak. If that's the case, all you're going to need, you won't need that big fat adapter. Just go down there, you can buy a steel plate. It's about a sixteenth of an inch thick and you mount it on there. You put paper gasket, steel plate, paper gasket. You set the throttle body in place, it'll seal up perfectly. Now, before we cinch down that throttle body there, we've got to deal with our throttle bracket here, throttle cable bracket. Now, if you remember, they came with two, one for one with an automatic, one for manual transmission cars. That's the one that we're going to use since we got a four speed here. Now, all we got to do is set the thing right on top of here and put the nut on. Now we can tighten down that throttle body using a crisscross pattern, torque them down to five, seven foot pounds. Now we install the throttle cable ball on the throttle arm. Roll the cable up into the throttle cable bracket and snap the cable onto that ball. Now with the throttle body bolted down, we can start reconnecting our vacuum lines. This one, for the power brakes, goes right back here in the corner of the throttle body. And this line right here for the vacuum advance goes right here to ported vacuum. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is install this temp sensor that comes with the Terminator kit. We're going to replace this one down here that's already in the intake manifold. What this one's currently being used for is to cycle our electric fans on the radiator. Once we get this one in place, it's going to send the uh, temperature information to the computer and the Terminator can cycle up to two fans and set them at whatever temperature that you want. But before we can replace that sending unit, we need to drain just a little bit of coolant out of the radiator. All right, now we've got enough of the coolant out of there that we can just remove this sensor and replace it with the one that comes in the kit. Snug it down. The last thing we want to do on this side is reconnect the throttle spring and then we're done. With well, the ECU is the next thing that we're going to mount up here. A couple of things to keep in mind when you're choosing a place to mount it. Now you can put it inside, but I'll tell you what, we've got an aftermarket uh, air conditioner unit here. Doesn't allow us to get it up inside there, but if you've got room, why not mount it in the glove box? Great place for them. I put several of them there myself before. But since we're going to keep this thing in the engine compartment, here's what you want to consider. You want to keep it away from any radical heat source there. You want to make sure that you've got plenty of room between the headers and this thing here. You don't want a lot of heat getting to it. Um, you also want to keep it away from any um, high energy, uh, noisy electronic devices. For instance, this HEI distributor gives off a lot of electronic noise, just like a, a CD ignition system would. So give them plenty of room around there. Um, here's something else. These here are the plugins for the wiring harness. If you mount it up like this, it's going to collect water in there, possibly short out something. And uh, so you want to make sure that you mount it with those plugins down. Now one last thing along those same lines, um, since we've got these down, you also want to make sure that you're not mounting it in a place that's going to get splashed heavily with water every time you drive through a mud puddle. Now I've looked this thing over and I think uh, right about in here is going to be a great place for it. Got plenty of room between the headers and the ECU. We'll go ahead and drill our holes. Well, now that we've got the ECU mounted on the firewall there, we can go ahead and, and run the wiring harness. What I've decided to do is run it right up underneath the lip of the firewall here. That's going to give a pretty good bit of concealment there, make it as inconspicuous as possible. And I've routed it behind the fender uh, attaching point on the firewall here. And we're going to route it down around here. All we've got to do is plug in these two underneath. All right, now we're ready to finish up some more of the wiring. Now you can see this little red and white uh, wire that comes out of the bundle right there. What I'm doing is feeding it through a grommet here into the inside of the car and Eric's going to pick it up in there. You got it, Eric? All right, good deal, Eric, thanks. Um, now, once it's inside of the car, you're going to want to make sure that it gets routed to a switched 12-volt source. And by that, I mean it's got to be a good, clean 12-volt source that's 
on when this ignition switch on and also on when it's in the start position. So make sure that uh, you don't run it to a dirty uh, 12 volt source uh, when it's cranking like for instance the coil. Some guys might want to hook it up to the coil but just go to the fuse box or any one of those sources inside there. Check it with, uh, with a continuity tester. Make sure you got good 12 volts there when the switch is on and in the start position. Okay. Now the green wire what that's going to do is it's going to power our fuel pump and we don't have the fuel pump mounted yet so right now we're going to just drop it down in here we'll pick it up later on when we get the fuel pump installed now while we're working on this side here you'll see we've got a couple of fat wires here these will power up the ECU here's our jack right here that's going to plug into the ECU the other end two big fat wires guess where the red one goes that's right to the positive terminal on the battery same with the black negative terminal on the battery. That way we make sure that we've got a great connection. We're powering up the ECU just the way it needs to be and well then we'll be good to go. We'll get over to the other side there. Anytime that you're making new connections there, it's always a good idea to crimp them and follow up with a solder. Good job there, Eric. And then we'll put this uh, shrink wrap on there and we'll be good to go. And we'll put a little heat on the shrink wrap, bring her down. Yeah, that's nice. Good to go. This connection right here goes right to the TAC terminal on the HEI. All right, now we're about to connect up the coolant sensor wire here. Eric, if you'll uh, take and ho hook that up to the sensor right up in the front there that we installed earlier. Now, here's something you guys want to think about while you're doing all the routing and everything. Make sure that any of the wires that have to do with the, uh, with the EFI don't come in contact with your spark plug wires because there could be some leakage out of them and it'll send a false signal to the computer and um, next thing you know you got problems that you're going to try and sort through. So, so when you're done bundling all this stuff just make sure you have plenty of clearance between any of these wires and the potential leakage out of like spark plug wires and that sort of thing. All right, everything's looking pretty good here. Now, you might remember that big pigtail I showed you coming out of the back of the throttle body earlier. Well, it's time to hook it up. And it doesn't get much simpler than this. One pigtail, one push, one lock, we're ready to go. Now, here's something else that's pretty cool. You'll see that we've got a couple of unused uh, connectors here. One of them is marked inputs, outputs. And what this is going to do, it's going to control our electric fans by the ECU there. Now this one that's marked ignition, well this one we're not using because we've got a self-contained HEI and we're good with that, but for you guys that are running like a, a CD box, well the kit comes with this little adapter right here. You plug it in and it goes over to the, to the uh, CD box and the CD box gives it a tack signal, it'll sync everything up, get you running real smooth. Now here's something else that I thought was really cool, especially for you Chevy guys. Um, if you're running a small body uh, HEI distributor like what came out in the mid 90s small blocks and big blocks and stuff, um, it's, it, it allows you to go ahead and use this, uh, this adapter that you can buy from Holly and it plugs right up in there like that and they've got an adapter that also works for Fords. But what you can do with it, you can use that little handheld controller there and it allows you to set, uh, it, it, comes, it gives you a good baseline timing curve anyway. It allows you also adjust your idle and your wide open uh, ignition curves, get you running real sweet. And I'm gonna do it. Now, what I've done here is I've gone ahead and tightened up this wire bundle here. I've mounted it with just a few Adel clamps and it tucks real nice under this ledge here on the firewall and with that black wrap, man it's camouflaged really nice, you can hardly tell it's there. What I'm working on down here is the mount for the fuel pressure regulator. Now this thing comes in, uh, in the fuel delivery kit that we're going to install later on here. Now 
This, uh, this fuel pressure regulator here, we've installed an optional transducer on it, and what it does, it sends a signal through this wire here back to the ECU. And what it allows us to do um, is monitor the fuel pressure uh, through that little handheld device that I showed you earlier. Now, a lot of guys will use a gauge like this to at least set the initial pressure uh, on this regulator here. But, uh, you know, you can lose pressure under a number of circumstances, especially wide open throttle. You can lose fuel pressure uh, due to a clogged filter, a uh, pinched line, or maybe even your fuel pump's going away. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're monitoring that fuel pressure regulator before that event becomes catastrophic for you. Now we're going to mount it right here for a couple of reasons. Easy connection with that wire that I told you about earlier and also we have to run a return line from the throttle body over to here to the regulator and then again the return from the bottom of the regulator we'll run a return line back to the tank and uh, well once I get this regulator mounted up I'm going to uh, show you what else is included in that fuel delivery kit that we talked about. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the rest of the fuel delivery system. Now, you might remember that we've spent some money on some optional items like that transducer I showed you just a minute ago. Money well spent, but we want to stay within our budget. So what we've done here is we've chosen the least expensive of the four kits that are available for the Terminator. Um, and just because it's the least expensive doesn't mean it's scrimping on parts. For instance, what the, the kit comes with is this Earl Superstock hose here. Now, I really like this stuff because it's really, really easy to use. They work in conjunction with these Earl's um, push lock uh, fittings here. You just slip them in. No clamp needed. You just slip them in. Nice, clean, dry, sanitary installation. Now, the clamps that come with the kit do work with these special barb fittings that we've got here. And they are used to secure the hoses to these filters. Now, speaking of that, we've got two filters here. This is the uh, a pre filter, and this is the main uh, high pressure filter. Now, the filters are really crucial here because you don't want any debris at all getting up in those injectors. It'll just clog them up, tear them up, and cause you all kinds of problems. Now, it also comes with this fuel pressure or uh, fuel pump block off plate here. Now, the reason for that is because we're just going to totally lose our mechanical pump here. And we're going to replace it with this pump. This is a high pressure pump that comes with the kit. Now, this thing will feed up to 650 horsepower. I figure that small block over there is making maybe four and a quarter horsepower, so it's going to be more than adequate for our fuel needs, even if we decide to upgrade the motor later on. Um, well, that's it. I think we're ready to start bolting on some parts here. And man, I'll tell you, I'm sure glad that Eric showed up here today. Hey, Eric, can you get the door? Well, all right, now that we've got the car in the air, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of the mechanical fuel pump here, and then we'll replace it with this fuel block off that I showed you earlier that comes in the kit. Well, okay, now we're gonna move a little bit further back. We need to find a suitable location for our O2 sensor. Now, we're gonna locate it right here on the collector, and uh, when you're choosing a location for that O2 sensor, you want to get it as far back on the collector as you possibly can. Now that's going to ensure that you get a good sampling out of all four cylinders on this side. You also want to make sure that you uh, install it, I don't know, 5 to 10, 12 degrees down. What that's going to do is it's going to prevent condensation from getting in there. Trust me, if you start this thing up, get a little bit of condensation in there and it collects in there, it'll really shorten the lifespan of your O2 sensor. Now I'm going to move back and see if I can find a suitable location for our fuel pump. In the meantime, hey Eric, would you mind uh, taking this header off and uh, we'll get that O2 bung welded in there and we can be ready to go with that. Well, um, I've looked everywhere under the back here by the tank for a good mounting location for our pump here, and quite honestly, there just really isn't a suitable spot. But your car might be configured different, so um, you might be able to fab up a bracket there. You might be able to mount the, the pump close to the tank there, but here's a couple of things you want to think about. Keep this thing mounted as close to the tank as possible because this pump is designed to push the fuel a whole lot better than it pulls it. Um, 
Plus, you want to mount it below the level of the fuel tank, and that's going to give it a little bit of a gravity feed there, make the pump's job a little bit easier. Also, um, I put this foam sleeve on here in anticipation of mounting the pump, um, but when, before you do that, you'll notice on the pump there's, a, there's an arrow that shows the direction of the flow of the fuel. There's also the same arrows on the, on the, pressure, pump, on the pressure filter and also on the pre-filter here. Now you just want to make sure that your arrows are all matched up and they all point in the direction of the fuel flow. Now one more thing that, uh, that we want to talk about here while I've got this thing out. Um, the kit also includes these high pressure clamps right here and some extra super stock hose. Now if you use those to hook it all up, that's going to ensure that you get a nice, tight, dry uh, connection, keep the leaks from happening and everything like that. Now what I've done here is I've kind of looked along the frame rail here and uh, it looks like this is going to be a great place. There's an opening in the frame right here and if we put this up in the side of the frame rail, a couple of things happen. First of all, um, it's about as close as we can get to the tank and second of all, I like the protection that this frame is going to give to this whole assembly right here. Um, keep it protected from any rocks or any other road debris that might be slung up by the tires. Now we're going to mount this thing using the clamps that come in the kit and uh, shoot that looks like a pretty good location there. I think we're good to go. Alright well Eric got the header off for us and as you can see he's marked where the bung for the O2 sensor needs to go. So we're going to go ahead and center punch it and that hole needs to come out uh, to 7 eighths of an inch so we're going to use this step drill here till we get to that size. All right, now that we've got the hole out to 7 eighths of an inch, the bung just sets in there like that. And we're going to MIG it all the way around, making sure we have a nice airtight weld. All right, that looks pretty good. Well, we're about ready to start burning some wire. I'm going to insert this bung into the hole that we drilled there, make sure that everything fits good. There we go. Now, we're going to go ahead and make a couple of tack welds first just to hold this thing in place. but. One thing you want to keep in mind is that that bung needs to have an airtight weld all the way around it. If you let some air get into that, what it's going to do is contaminate your, uh, your mixture that, uh, or the reading that it sees and it's going to send an erroneous reading to the computer. You're not going to get the optimum uh, fuel and air mixture that way and uh, well, I, I think this looks pretty good. We're about ready to start burning some wire. Well, we're about ready now to start running our fuel and return lines here. Now, what we're going to use is the original pickup line, and that's going to be our feed line there. And this gas tank, because it's a California emissions car, has another bung welded into the tank right here. It's a 3 8 bung. It'll serve our purposes for a return line perfectly. Now, not all tanks come with those fittings, though, so your job might not be as simple as that. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of things that you can consider as an alternative. Now, our gas tank gave us a couple of opportunities for both the feed and the return lines there, but if your car isn't configured like that, there are some options. Now, on a Chevelle at least, um, you can replace that pickup there with this one. Now, this, this pickup here is for cars that came with quadra jets on it after 69 and, and, and on up. But you can see it's got the big feed line here and this would, uh, would suffice as a return line. The only thing that you really need to do is extend this down into the fuel level. You would add about three, four inches and get it down in the fuel level. Otherwise there's a possibility that you might get some aeration and the aeration of course is going to be right here near the pickup. Not a good deal. It can actually end up being, uh, you know, causing some fuel starvation issues. Now, if you don't have a, a gas tank that uh, lends itself to either one of those deals there. Um, we got this tank from Tanks Inc. Now what's nice about it, it bolts right in place of the stock tank. In fact, it looks a lot like a stock tank, but it's got provisions here for an in-tank sending unit and fuel pump. Now what's really cool about that is this is a high capacity fuel pump here. It'll feed up to 650 horsepower but it's down in the tank and also inside of the tank is a built-in sump. Now what that's going to do is it's going to keep your pickup submerged in fuel and that's going to prevent any fuel starvation problems for guys that might like to do some autocross or other high-spirited driving if you know what I mean. Now I guess I'm ready to run that hose. All right, well, that's good and solid. Now we've got the fuel pump mounted here. We ran all of our fuel lines from the tank 
on up here to our pump and filter assembly. Now everything, we kept everything away from any rotating items or any suspension parts that might move up and down and uh, you know, cause the line to get pinched or something like that. But let me show you something that we've done here. We actually grounded the fuel pump here to the frame on one of our mounting bolts on the clamps. Now, when you do that, you want to make sure, this is an old car, so it's got some rust on the frame. You want to make sure you clean all that off, get a good, clean metal surface so you get a solid ground. Anything that you do on a fuel injection system, you want to make sure you have good contacts both for the positive and the grounds. And uh, we've done that. And of course, along the same lines, this green line here comes from the ECU. That feeds power to the pump. Now, we'll go ahead and secure all of our lines with some zip ties and some 8L clamps here later. But right now, looks like Eric's been working on the O2 sensor. How you coming there, buddy? I've got the O2 in there. It's tight and ready to go. I'm just going to feed this O2 sensor wire up through here. All right, good job. Well, all right, we're getting pretty close here now. In fact, we're going to hear this thing fire up in just a few minutes. But first, we've got a few things that we need to take care of here up on top of the engine. I want you to take a look back here at this fuel pressure regulator again. See this little brass fitting? What that is, is a, it's going to get a vacuum reference signal and it's going to pull that signal off the back of the throttle body there. We just hook it up and what this does, it allows the fuel pressure regulator to make sure that the injectors have the proper pressure at the injectors themselves. Now, while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and hook up this connector here. This goes into the transducer and that allows us to read the fuel pressure in that little handheld device that I showed you earlier. There's something else that I noticed when uh, I was underneath the car there. I'm going to take this fitting right here and I'll swap it out for a straight fitting. And what that's going to do is when we run our return line, it's just going to give us a lot cleaner uh, installation there. Let us run the fuel line for the return straight down by the firewall there and uh, just give us a cleaner installation. And while we're at it, I'm going to take this 90 and I'm going to put it up here on the feed line on that throttle body. Now what that's going to do for us, it's going to give us a real nice clean installation because look what we've got here. The feed line and the return line are both going to be running right back here towards the back of the engine. We'll be able to tuck them down there, give us a nice clean installation. Um, I, I got one more tip for you. Um, both these, uh, the, the feed and the return lines are the same size. Um, so what we've done here is we've marked our pressure line with a little bit of blue tape here. That's going to help you keep them separated so you know where to hook them up. Trust me, you don't want to mix them up and hook the feed to the return line and vice versa. Anyway. Time to get to work here. With this super stock hose works real good with the Earl's push lock fittings. You just slide that red sleeve over the end of it. Give a little bit of lube inside there to make it all slide together easily. And then you just push it on, just like the name says. Cool. Now, those fittings were pretty easy to put together and attaching them is just as simple. What I've done here is I've tightened this up finger tight and we want to give it another quarter turn. There we go, that's perfect. Now you want to make sure that you use a, a, a wrench on the adapter fitting here on the fuel rail to prevent any damage by over torquing that fitting right there. Well, I've topped off the radiator with that coolant that we drained earlier when we replaced that temp sensor right there. And I guess we're about ready to hook the battery back up, but before I do, I want to give you a little precautionary warning here. Um, when, you, when, when you connect the battery cable here, it can cause a voltage spike and potentially damage that ECU. So what I've done is I've disconnected the power source to that ECU, and that way we can hook this thing up, we'll let it sit for a minute here, let the electrical system stabilize. Then we're going to initialize everything with that handheld programmer. Once we get that done. We can go ahead and, and uh, turn the key, energize the whole system, and check for any fuel leaks. Well, all right, looks like we've got all of our connections made. Now we're going to go ahead and power up the ECU. Eric, give me power there. Don't start it, just give me power. Put it in the run position. All right, we're going to go down to the wizard. That's going to get us going. All right, we're going to start the wizard. Do you want to create a new calibration? Yes, we do. Select the injection type. 
We're going to go down here to the Terminator. That's what we're using. And we've got the 405 part number. There we go. Select the engine size. We're going to go up to 409 cubic inches. Camshaft type. Uh, we don't know what the specs are, so we're going to tell it we don't know. Now, will the ECU control the timing? No, it won't. Select the RPM signal input. We're going to get our input from the coil, so we'll select that. All right, it says calibration has been created. Good deal. We're going to press that button there. Do you want this, to, this file to be loaded? Yes. Wow, there we go. It's loaded. Just press the button one more time. All right, now we're going to go down to the TPS auto set. Make sure the ignition is on and the engine is not started. We're good on that. All right, now we're going to slowly depress the pedal to the floor, release it, and do it twice. Eric, slowly to the floor, release it, do it again. Cool. We're done. And it says the TPS auto set was successful. All right, now, next thing we've got to do is uh, we need to cycle the key a couple of times, let the fuel pump pick up the fuel, and we're going to check it for fuel leaks. Well, all right, now that O2 sensor is hooked up, and I guess we're ready to cycle the key a couple of times, let the fuel pump pick up some fuel, and check for fuel leaks. Go ahead and cycle it there, Eric. That's a good sign. The fuel pump's kicked in, cycled. Everything looks pretty nice and dry up here. We've got a couple of connections I want to check underneath here. Everything looks good under there. I guess we're about ready to fire this thing up. All right, go ahead and crank it, Eric. Let's see what it's going to do. Wow, that was pretty sweet. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to let this thing get up to operating temperature. Give the computer a few minutes to kind of learn some of the basics here. And uh, well, I can't believe how smooth this thing is, how quickly it started up. I think it's learning a little bit right now. As soon as it goes ahead and stabilizes, we're going to go ahead and cut it off. We'll throw the hood back on. We're going to take this baby for a ride. Yeah, that air cleaner sure fits nice. Now, we've let the engine get up to operating temperature. We've stabilized everything. The computer's probably learned as much as it's going to in a static position. Next thing we have to do is drive it and let it see all of our uh, different driving conditions. Now, we're going to take this thing for a ride as soon as we get the hood back on. And i got to tell you, I'm ready to put the spurs to this baby. big difference already. The throttle response is a lot crisper than we had with that 3310 Holley. I mean, uh, it's, it's unbelievable how better, how much better the throttle response is. Um, you know, I've driven a lot of fuel injection cars and uh, this one, it just seems, it's got, got the same kind of startup. It's got the same kind of you know, reaction is a, is an OE fuel injection car does, and uh, wow, I mean, this is like it transforms this car completely. So, uh, wow, this looks like it's going to be good. This is going to be a lot of fun. What we're going to do is we're going to just drive around, kind of take it easy, let the computer get uh, familiar with the car, let it get familiar with some of the uh, driving conditions that we're going to see, and. Uh, Holly recommends that you drive the car for a couple of days to let the computer um, see all the different driving conditions that uh, it'll be exposed to. So we're going to take this road uh, 
just nice smooth easy ride down here and then uh, after a while we'll get on some uh, windy roads we'll shift it up and down through the gears we'll uh, after we get a little more comfortable with it we'll even hammer the throttle a little bit and see how this thing goes man this is feeling pretty good already driving for about an hour here now and giving this thing a lot of different looks at different driving conditions and I'll get it out and drive it and let it learn some more but right now uh, we're running a little bit low on fuel so we're gonna go on home we're gonna finish this little drive up here shut her off but man this thing has made a huge improvement since when we first fired it up first hit the road it's smoother and getting better all the time so uh, am I happy yeah, I guess so. Terminator, we'll be back. <laughs>